Hello, my name's Tom and this is Proper Honest Tech. Apple TV is a fantastic platform. For around £180, you're getting a powerful Apple Silicon processor in a tiny black box that you plug into your TV, giving you access not only to the TV OS app ecosystem, but also games, podcasts, your photo library, and a whole host of other things. But like many Apple products, it doesn't come with a detailed set of instructions. And as Apple TV has gotten more complicated over the years, it is possible that you're not using yours to its full potential. So in this video, I'm going to share with you 10 things that you can do with Apple TV that you may not be aware of. Disclaimer, we are talking about the 4K or the HD version of the Apple TV, not the third gen or earlier Apple TV boxes. Tip 1. Connect a game controller. Apple TV isn't exactly a AAA gaming beast like the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, but it does have some good games on it. And if you have access to Apple Arcade, there's now quite a lot of fun games that are included with your subscription. Problem is, playing using the Siri remote is pretty awful, and buying a controller specifically for use with Apple TV is expensive. But good news if you happen to have a spare Bluetooth-compatible controller kicking around, like I have with this PS4 controller. Simply pair it via Bluetooth to your Apple TV in the settings and you can then use the controller with any number of games. This also works on your iPad or Mac, making for a great way to really amp up your gaming experience all without breaking the bank. Tip 2. Connect your AirPods, watch with a friend. Apple TV has excellent audio, with support for Dolby Atmos if you pair it with a suitable system. But that might not always be suitable to you, especially if you want to watch content late at night. Well, good news if you own any kind of Apple headphone, as you can connect these to your Apple TV and then reconnect them easily each time you want to. To connect them in the first instance, pair them in settings like you would normally. Then, when you've got Apple TV up and running, hold the home button on your remote to bring up this little home menu. Here in the audio section, you can choose to connect to your AirPods if you haven't already, and they should pair almost instantly. Then any volume adjustments you make via the Apple TV remote will impact your AirPods and not the TV that you're watching through. And whilst I'm doing this with AirPods, you can also do this with any other pair of Bluetooth headphones or earphones also, so no worries if you've not made the jump to AirPods just yet. Tip 3. Search within a specific streaming app. You can search within streaming apps using Siri. Now, I believe that Apple TV needs to have fully integrated with the app for this to work. For example, Amazon Prime, Disney+, Plus, Netflix are all integrated with Apple TV, so you can search within these apps. To do this, you just use the relevant context when asking Siri to search for you. So, for example, rather than saying, show me Japanese horror movies, you would say, show me Japanese horror movies available on Netflix. Apple TV will then cater the search results according to your search. This can be really good if you only want to find content that's freely available for you to watch, rather than being served up results which look good at first until you realize that you have to pay to rent or buy them. Tip 4. Create folders. It's easy to see the Apple TV home screen and assume that what you see is what you get. Certainly on previous generations and with previous versions of TV OS, that was the case. But not anymore you can now employ many of the same organizational methods that you're familiar with on iOS here on tvOS, particularly things like deleting apps and putting apps into folders. So if you want to do this, you need to start by putting tvOS into the home screen edit mode by pressing and holding the select button on your remote on any app. After a second or two, the apps will begin to jiggle, just like they do on iOS, telling you that you can edit them. You can drag apps around the home screen using the remote, or you can create folders by dragging one app onto another, just like in iOS. You can then rename the folder if you wish, so you could perhaps have one for your TV content like I have, with the likes of iPlayer, All4, etc., and then another one for the big streaming apps like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, etc. And if you want to delete an app, put the home screen into the app edit mode like I just showed you, move your cursor over an app, and press the play pause button on your remote to bring up some options. Delete app is one of those options. Tip 5. Use your iPhone, iPad or Apple Watch as a remote. The brand new Apple TV 4K has a brand new redesigned remote which looks really good, but what if you're stuck with the rubbish remote that came with previous versions like I am? 
You might be pleased to know that you can use pretty much any Apple iOS, iPad OS, or even Watch OS device to control your Apple TV, so long as they're all connected on the same Wi-Fi network. It used to be that you had to download a specific app to do this, but not anymore. Just scroll down on your iPhone or iPad to bring up Control Center and choose this button. If you can't see it, you might have to head into the Control Center options and ensure that it's enabled. Connect to your Apple TV and you're good to go with all of the functionality of the remote within your iPhone or iPad. You can even do this on Apple Watch. Just choose the remote app and again, all of the functionality you'd expect is available to you, including Siri. Tip 6. Use Siri Remote to control the video playback. Let's say you're watching something and you want to skip to a specific timestamp in the content, say the one hour mark. You could use the scrubbing tool on the remote to try and get to that very specific point, but it's really fiddly. The alternative is to just ask Siri via the Siri remote to take you to that specific point. Or you might decide that you want to skip forward five minutes through the content, you can do that too, again just by asking Siri to jump you forward that amount of time. Want to resume playback from the beginning of something you're in the middle of? Just ask Siri to start the movie from the beginning. Easy. Tip 7. Search by actor. Ever been in the mood for a gritty Tom Hardy biopic? Or just decided that you fancy watching something with Margot Robbie in? Well, Apple TV has you covered. Just ask Siri to search for movies with any particular actor in and the app will return any relevant search results. You can also click on the actor's profile to be taken to their own dedicated Apple TV page and the app can even find content where they guest starred, like talk shows or sitcoms. Tip 8. Close down open apps. This is a great trick to know if you find that your Apple TV is running a bit sluggish. Whilst the Apple TV doesn't technically support multitasking, apps do remain open in the background unless you actually close them, so it's good to get into the habit of opening and closing apps properly. To do this, double tap on the home button on your Siri remote, the same way that you would on your iOS device. Then you can either scroll through open apps by swiping left and right, and by swiping up, you can close down any apps that you have open. If you've never done this before, or not done it for a while, you might be surprised at just how many apps you've got open. It's a great little trick for keeping your Apple TV running along smoothly. Tip 9. Force a reboot. Apple TV is, for the most part, pretty stable thanks to improvements in the operating system over time. But like any device, there will be times when you need to reboot it. You can do this via the settings menu but it is often quicker and easier to do this via a very simple remote control shortcut. Simply hold down the menu button and the home button together for about 5 seconds or so until you see the Apple TV respond by the screen going black and the Apple logo appearing on your screen. You can then let go and a moment or two later, your Apple TV will be back up and running. Tip 10. Mirror your iPhone, iPad or Mac on your Apple TV. With so much of the Apple ecosystem available natively on tvOS, like Apple TV, Photos, YouTube, etc., there are fewer reasons than ever why you might want to share your iPhone or iPad screen to your Apple TV, but there are still some very valid reasons. For example, my partner and I recently had some contracts to sign, and rather than huddle around my MacBook, I projected the content of the PDF onto our Apple TV so that we could work through the forms together. To do this, you need to go to your iPhone, iPad or Mac and in the control center, look for this icon. Then simply choose your Apple TV and you're now mirroring to it across your Wi-Fi, as simple as that. You can stop the process by choosing Stop Mirroring. It's so simple in fact that when I used to have to go and visit clients on site in my previous job, I used to carry an Apple TV with me as it was often easier to plug that into their boardroom TV and just connect to it than it was to try and connect via HDMI directly to their TV or IT system. Tip 11. Bonus tip. Calibrate Apple TV using your iPhone. Okay, I know, I said 10 tips at the start of this video. Consider this one your bonus. This functionality is new to the latest version of tvOS 14.5. Essentially, you can use the light sensors on the front of your iPhone to measure the accuracy of the lighting and color being emitted from your TV while Apple TV is running. You do this by activating the feature here in the settings menu, then holding your iPhone against your TV, and Apple thankfully guide you through the entire process. Apple TV will then change the relevant settings within Apple TV to compensate for areas where your TV could be a little lacking. 
Now, this does of course only change the settings within Apple TV, not your television overall, so don't expect to see the same benefits when you switch out to live TV or to a different service. But if you do a lot of your content viewing through Apple TV, give it a go and see how you can benefit from improved color, brightness, and contrast. And that's it. 10 ways plus a bonus way that you can get more out of your Apple TV. Do you know any other useful tips or tricks that I might have missed? If you do, drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.